Hello lovely people, new moon blessings to you. Today it's Monday the 12th of April 2021 and it's April weather here in Somerset. I've had a bit of a strange day really, lots of strange dreams I woke up to with vital information for me. I'm focusing on past life astrology at the moment for a workshop on Sunday, day eight of this wave spell. So I've really been putting that intention out and focusing on my north node, south node dynamic, which is also the planetary dynamic, strangely enough. And when we do this with conscious intent, we get some key information from our higher self. Dark moon is a very good time to be doing this. And of course, the new moon energy doesn't actually come into the moon having any light for the first couple of days. And so really working with that dark moon energy what's coming from another space within us through our connection to source. I've also had a lovely day, I'm just looking out of the window now, so I'm just going to turn this round a little bit so you can see what I can see. And I think from there you can see my bird table, albeit not very well from this angle, uh, but I've been watching the robin coming and feeding its baby and how beautiful that is just loving nature and the spring and the snow whereas again this often happens in the UK and it also determines a lot of our behavior and our belief systems as well our environment really affects that so this wave spell of course is all about what we see reflected back. So we're in White Mirror, Wave Spell, and it began yesterday. And here we are, down here. As you can see, the bottom of my <laughs> calendar is falling apart. If you want one of these calendars, just go onto my website, flowwithjoe.com, under resources, and there is a calendar on there the Mayan synchronizer, which is this one. This is one that I made for myself, which was a great exercise. And as you can see, they're all in separate bits. So you can print them off and you can laminate them and you can start to move the blue tack, which of course, if you watch my videos, you'll know that's what I recommend. So there we are today. So we're on the blue, second day. And the reason that I've done the video today, not yesterday, is for several reasons. But one of the main reasons is because today we complete the nine month cycle of the Mayan year that we're in, which is Blue Lunar Storm. So what does that mean? Mm, I don't really know, but I guess, uh, you know, if you do know a definitive term or info about this, please do post this underneath the video or message me or however you want to relay that information. But my guess is that it's like the red, white, blue and yellow cycle. We go through that process because that's what we have as a human being in our charts, in our dynamic. And then we go into the green space once we become 52, once we become a Mayan elder. Although we're still going through this process, we're revisiting it with different eyes. Hopefully those of a wiser human being. And that, that's the point of doing this process and evolutionary astrology is that we start to evolve as a human being, this is the Quetzal Collateral, the Red Skywalker, who is the human being doing the personal healing heart journey, which is the Green Castle. So my belief is, 
that's the straight joe that we've done the nine month trip now we're seeing where we are around this year and when it started on the 26th of july so it's been quite a challenging year hasn't it uh since we went into lockdown in the last aries sun and we've been shown a lot of our power issues, a lot of repeating patterns coming up from our childhood around patriarchy and authority. And what that means for us in particular on a personal level and what it means for us on a global level as well. So now, what do we want to do with that nine months? Where are we? What do we want to do with where we are? Blue Lunar Storm Blue Storm is the 19th Mayan sign down here. It's a mastery sign. So the last seven are the mastery signs. And so for me, it's what this time is all about. It's the emotional evolution. It's about Pluto, the planet Pluto, as in yellow sun, which is tomorrow. And Pluto is wherever it is in the transit, so at the moment it's in Capricorn and the planet, so we're seeing all the patriarchal structures starting to collapse and disintegrate and we're seeing a lot of things coming up from the underworld around the shadow, around lies, deception, corruption, that many people have known about, but now, it, it's bare-faced, you know, it's out there, looming large for people so that they can't ignore it anymore. Something has to change now. And so mastery of our own personal shadow, basically, is what that's about. And seeing whether we can be our authentic selves, as in Red Moon, which is another planetary archetype and so we're in red moon 13 year cycle from 2006 until 2018 so again with all of these you can always go back over the old story and you can have a look at what was going on for you then because aries is about as being the heart warrior the warrior of the heart who is healing their wounding so they can come into authenticity and be in the beacon of light in red moon terms. So now we're building on that energy, we're refining it. And in 2019, we went into Ix shell energy, which is the moon goddess, white wizard, as it's known, the 14th mind sign and so she is again a mastery sign that's the next sign to red skywalker so we're using all our human being energy and we're having a look at what that has brought up for us around our empowerment issues so imagine a time in the future when we don't have any empowerment issues because we're all living in a beautifully balanced society where we know what creates issues for human beings so we've crafted the perfect place the garden of eden where human beings from the moment they're born are looked after in a very gentle loving way honoring who they are why they came here to experience human being life and teaching them, nurturing them, all of those ways in a very conscious, present way, rather than projecting our old ancestral storylines onto them so it carries on and on, which is basically what's going on now and what's been happening for thousands of years. And we are the ones who are here to turn that around. That's what I offer you. Remembering who we are, we've come here to make a shift. So 13 years of empowerment and letting the magic flow through us. And Ixchel's planets are the asteroid belt. So new consciousness coming in 
asteroid astrology, again, something that I'm learning a lot more about at the moment, mind blowing stuff, what you can put into a chart and discover key storylines so that people who want to know, who are looking to know more info, so it's uh, detective work if you like, on uncovering past storylines that have transmuted into current ancestral stories that we can change as human beings and how empowering is that? It's fantastic. So I love talking about it and sharing it. And so today it's a really good day with this new moon energy in Aries to really focus on the white mirror wave spell. And yesterday when it initiated in dark moon in Aries, depending on where you were on the planet, um, new moon time was at 03.30 in the UK. So check out what time that was for you, wherever you are. And again, just notice what was going on for you on the white mirror day in that dark moon energy of new beginnings for our heart warrior self so that we're healing and experiencing different things and the new moon was at 22 degrees of Aries so I'm just going to read that for you now which of course is a master builder number it's the Mary Magdalene code it's quite a Hmm, what's the word? Surprising. Um, transformative, I want to say, because it's a master builder number. Um, 22 is a master builder number. So I call it the Mary Magdalene Code as well, because it's very much about the return of the sacred feminine. And for me, 22 was a hugely transformative year. Not in a good way. On the, in the first instance, I became very ill because I was in a very toxic relationship and I needed to go through that. That was my real sort of shamanic process, rebirthing process of understanding what makes me really ill. And currently that's how we all learn at the moment. That's how human beings learn through suffering. So in order for us to not suffer at some point in the future, we have to go through all this suffering in order to understand what makes us suffer on a mind, body and spirit level. Aries at 22 degrees. This is aqua or fire.net and I'll put a link underneath that you can look at. Puppets coming alive at night. The inner worlds can be just as animated, as fully fleshed out, as vivid and vibrant as any outer world could ever hope to match. There are vast kingdoms to explore on the inner. It is all a matter of motivation. If you seek for inward substantiation, you will get it to infinity and beyond. Here you get what you ask for. Everything snowballs, it tests you mightily in that everything inside comes out. A wish like magic becomes embodied. Being so fertile and, and ingenuous is one of the most demanding possible arenas to put yourself in. Most difficult of all is that if you fear or dread, resist or deny, these two have full power to play themselves out all the way. The inner life becomes the place where everything's happening and where you must cultivate your highest and your best, or else be treated to the validation and proof of whatever you put in there coming out again, amplified, magnified, completely full on. Wow. So yes, and this is the holograph. You know, this is what we're seeing on the planet is the universe bringing people's beliefs in front of them so that they can see them and they can see their past storylines being projected out from their inside. And this is why it's so important for people to do this inner work and remap the storyline. More of that in a moment. 
today we are on Aries at 28. A wreath of laurel placed on the head of an old man. The soul's journey is absolutely endless and you sense throughout that journey that somebody is watching. The greater dynamic is at work here and you live into that ultimate aspect from the very beginning. You simply know that your destiny must and will be fulfilled. There is a higher vibrational inside track that accompanies each step, each phrase, and that otherness gives you back yourself in such a fashion that you are never alone. Not incomplete, never less than whole. All of the vital agitations only serve to quicken the pace to bring you back on the spiral to that vital place again where you are known and acknowledged and from which you can go forth and know and acknowledge others in their destiny light, seen and sensed and known, free of all qualifications. So that is so magical, isn't it? I love all of these Aries degrees. And uh, again, this is, this is about us as a role player that we come here at this point in time in order to evolve the human being story. So how magical is that? That we have that power, we have that capability only for a big part of our life, in some cases we forget that we have that and that's part of the process of coming here is that we forget who we really are in order to become fully immersed in the human being storyline that we're playing the next level of the game at. And so we become deeply entrenched sometimes and bogged down and feeling that intense storyline of all the ancestors that have gone before around their survival issues. We are now in the 52 day process of relationship, Red Serpent, and we had those huge 10 day processes of accessing Akashic Record, because of course that's where we are when this 260 day cycle began. We are in Sagittarius initiation, so we're in that knowing experiential place. And this also connects to the North Node, South Node dynamic that's going on. If you want to know more in-depth information about these placements, then Google that North Node, South Node. And in particular, if you know what your North Node and South Node are, then this is a really amazing place to work with going deeper into finding out your past life stories. Again, like I said before, this is what I'm going to be revealing up to the level that I'm aware of at the moment at my workshop on Sunday. And I absolutely love doing this work because I learn so much for myself and then share it with others. And that's what I offer you is what we often teach is what we're here to learn as well. And I'm so grateful to everybody who's doing this process with me at the moment because it has just been such a revelation. It's been mind blowing to actually get to use this tool of the Mayan dream spell after working with it for nine years. And the manifestation in the 10th year now is just beyond anything that I could have imagined. And again, this is so key for now with this new beginning story and especially this week in astrology because we don't know what we don't know, right? I didn't know 10 years ago I was gonna be here having this conversation with you on YouTube about this. All I knew was I was coming to Glastonbury because intuitively I had to come and I felt the pull and I didn't really understand it, but part of me was saying, just go. And this energy again is expanding now because it's time for us to really get in touch with the adventure 
that we're here to birth as midwife, as Ikshel, and especially women, bringing in the sacred feminine within themselves. We have the body for it. So we have the dynamic of being in touch with very much with the circles and cycles and the moon and what that means in our body. And I also believe men have this too. It's just very understated and under, misunderstood, maybe not even looked at at the moment in, in terms of their feminine cycles. Because the feminine has been so repressed for thousands of years in order for us to go through this particular evolution process of very focused masculine energy and what that creates. And a lot of it doesn't feel good to most people on planet Earth because of the shadow story and how it's amplified. It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Again, if you check out psychology and the amygdala and how the emotional mind works, this, this is just simply that framework manifest on the planet. So everybody's fear is super duper amplified, um, not being healed, all issues around control. But the truth is we don't have any control over most of our lives. Um, but our ego likes to believe <laughs> that we do have. The more that we heal that though, and the more that we surrender to something greater than ourselves that we are a part of, so the divine consciousness that we're in embodiment of, then we have amazing potentiality and possibility happen that goes beyond what our mindset can create. So the universe has limitless ways of bringing us an amazing life if we allow it. And this is key again to the sacred feminine and the left hand side, which is all about receiving and letting that energy come in and come through us and change the old conditioned mindset. So the cards for today. I did a bigger picture design yesterday and that was very interesting as well. So in my group of people doing the 52 day process, I posted it on there and I've done a lot of research because of that as well. So um, again, it's, it's a great thing to do at the start of every wave spell is to do some cards. And so I have some goddess cards and for today's card, we've got Mary, sacred feminine. Who is she? How is she portrayed in lots of different ways, in lots of different cultures, religions, frameworks? Blessing, mother of all, may I know you hear my prayer of supplication and nurture me in my need. Tender goddess of mercy, may I always remember you will sustain me when I lose hope and support me when I encounter difficulty. So beautiful. And the mind card for today is center. So this is the fifth tone, overtone. And this is very connected to Blue Storm because when we're in our center, when we've mastered our fear through healing it, not through repressing it, when we've healed it, we change our heart. We change how we feel about life. We have courage. We don't get pulled out of our center by outside things happening in the holograph. And the holograph brings us different experiences as well because it brings us us. It brings us unresolved childhood story so that we can heal it, so that we can step through the looking glass of white mirror 
so that we can start living and reflecting back truth. That's the process. That's it in a nutshell. Change our story, change how we feel. Literally, the world changes because we have changed, because the world always reflects us back. So as above, so below. Which also connects to this card in Thoth. The lovers. So again, if you look at all that imagery on there, if you haven't tried the Thoth set yet, highly recommend it. He's the librarian. He always comes at the time of huge change as well. So again, he's very much connected to Mercury. And the shift, and we're having a huge shift in our storyline. So again, I'll put a link on with Eli Tarot, who does an amazing huge interpretation of this. It's a very complex card. In essence, in a nutshell, it's the sixth, sixth um, major arcana. So it's a key archetype around the spiritual marriage. It can be called the alchemical marriage. It's the marriage within. It's again, coming into relationship with oneself. And so everything that I was talking about, everything in the last 13 day cycle of Red Serpent, where our Kundalini is flowing, where we feel good, where we love and respect ourselves, where we've healed our story around, where we've experienced the opposite of that, and we've come into peace with it, and we've learned how to do relationship differently, all of that sort of dynamic really. So we have changed our inner plane through healing. We've also changed our mindset. So maybe we've grown up believing we weren't enough because of how people related to us when we were a child. Women in particular, I was having a conversation about this. Uh, there's a film out there I think it's called This Changes Everything by Gina Davis. It's an amazing film to watch, which shows about Hollywood and how she has actually done a lot of research showing about how Hollywood portrays women, for example, and portrays different cultures or not. And it's really fascinating stuff. When we're a child growing up, what's, what is mirrored back to us by the people who are around us? What do they believe? What have they pushed on to us around their beliefs? Maybe we grew up believing that there was something wrong with us because we had very critical parents. Uh, maybe that created a lot of fear for us. And so again, this goes back to what's happening with the astrology and the North Node in Gemini. And depending on where your North Node is in your chart as well, this is really key. So North Node in Gemini for me, both my parents are Geminis and I've got a lot of Gemini energy and I've got Jupiter in Gemini I've also got my IC, what I call my bottom rung of the ladder of the stairway to heaven is in Gemini as well. And so understanding all of this really helps me understand why things have happened to me and what my sole mission is around coming here into this family line and going deeper into it so I can understand what is my role in this? What is my potentiality? What are the gifts in my ancestral line? And what is it that I can unlock the secrets 
through healing. And so again, re remembering that when we're not being authentic, when we've grown up with a certain belief system about ourselves because of our culture, maybe because it's not safe to be honest and truthful, or it's not liked, or all of that sort of position, then we can hide ourselves sometimes and we can get stuck in that. And then of course it's, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy around the universe, as I said, brings us what we believe to be true, so that we can feel like we're in Groundhog Day and we just keep going round and round the same issues. If that's true for you right now and you'd like to know more about how to get off that merry-go-round, please do get in touch with me because this is the key focus of my work and I love sharing info with people around how to read their cosmic code and how to use healing modalities, primarily emotional freedom technique, so you can heal those old storylines and be free to do something else in a different way. It's not, I'm not saying it's easy to do, it's not, and it's not instant either. And you can get a very dynamic shift with EFT too and of course if you learn how to do it for yourself then you have that tool to use throughout life and I call it gas and air for the midwife journey as we're going through the birth tunnel now. So how does that fit into this week's energy and this wave spell? So as I said tomorrow we come into the last day of this 20 day cycle, we're at the bottom, and we've got yellow electric sun. And yellow electric sun is an amazing alchemical day. So in day three of every 13 day cycle, it's a great day to really focus on alchemy, especially with this new moon energy, which the moon will be in Taurus tomorrow. So that would be a fantastic day for setting out intentions. If you want something to happen fast, for example, in Taurus Sun, that's coming up in this wave spell as well. So a very dynamic time for you to do that and set that intention and send it out to the universe. And then the day after that, we go up here to the center of the Zolkin. So we're going down the central spinal column and we are in the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh, seven mystic, the closest to heaven on the pyramid. So if you imagine this is a pyramid pulled up in 3D, we're on the top. Okay, that's another way of looking at it. And so we're going into the structure of what do we need to transform in this 20 day period around our survival issues. How do we need to align with what the Great Mother is bringing us for our cosmic evolution? And that will, over that 20 days, will take us down to the manifestation of how much light we're going to hold at the end of that process. And for all of those that are doing tapping, EFT, this is it. So the more you tap every day, that's the difference that makes the difference. Okay, whatever's coming up, whatever's triggering you, this is what is coming up to be cleared from your old story. So the North Node is at 11 degrees of Gemini at the moment. So if you know what your code is, you can really work powerfully with this. And anybody who is in my group, this is what we really focus on over every 13 day cycle. This is what we focus on around what's the planetary energy, what's the Mayan cosmology, what's the process every day and what is our own personal process because that's the most important thing for the warrior of light going through that process is I want to know what the starry skies are doing 
you know, it will affect me anyway, but the more conscious I can be about this process, the more I understand what's going on in my life, the more I understand how to be a conscious creator, a conscious dreamer. So for me, it's conjunct my North Node at 10 degrees. So again, in a nutshell, North Node in Gemini is really about being open to new belief systems, new mindset, and Mercury in Aries at the moment, that's really pushing that energy. How do I change what I believe? Uh, Sagittarius being the South Node is about beliefs, it's about the Kashik record, it's about old story. So we're now coming into a space this week where we can reboot that old story because everything's aligned in the starry skies for us to do that. How do I have integrity as a human being? That's, that's the other thing. How do I speak truth? How do I speak what I really believe? How do I stay in my sense around that despite what else is going on around me? Do I stick to my line rather than change to the party line in order to enable a narcissist, for example? A lot of that going on at the moment. So we're working towards Saturday which is going to be yellow resonant seed. So we're gonna to be top of the pyramid in this 13 day cycle at that point. And that's what's resonating with the mask. Uh, and the mask is the part of us that is hiding, that is our coping mechanisms, for example, in relationship, enabling narcissists, not speaking our truth, being silent when we should speak up. And instead that energy is going deeper into our body and creating energetic blocks, creating ill health, for example. So not being our star-seeded self, not being the gift that we are out of fear, because maybe in past lives we've been persecuted. Chances are if you're watching this, then that's going to be a key storyline for you. So Saturday is a really big day because there are lots of planets coming together at 26 degrees. In, and we have um, the moon also is going across Mars on Saturday. On Saturday is such an amazing, amazing day for huge change. So this week is really, really going to be about building up to that in the first part of this wave spell. So we've got Mars at 22 degrees in Gemini. And by the end of the week on Saturday, it's going to be at 26 degrees. So Mars moving quickly through this energy, the warrior energy, bringing in these new ideas and these new situations for us. And for me, I always see Gemini as like a little bit of an island, really. Um, and interesting things going on for me on that level around connecting to small islands. And I live on a small island-ish and how that dynamic works and that I, you know, that's built into my blood as well on some level. So I love going exploring other islands like the Greek islands, for example. And so that's a key focus for me that I want to carry on. So I've got mid heaven in Sagittarius. So I love exploring, I love adventure. I love going checking out new religions, philosophies, frameworks and um, learning new things. So in terms of news that's coming up as well, this is, this is really key to be doing our due diligence around how do we know it's true, for example? How do we know that just because somebody's telling us something from wherever they deem to be from, that it's coming from the sword of truth, the white mirror, 
and it doesn't have an agenda because most of the things that are offered up to us in terms of books, uh, religious frameworks, they have been rewritten and rewired with a particular agenda in there in order to relate to people in a way that is not balanced, is not the lover's card, you know, is um, skewed in one way or another. It's a codependent pattern where people are having to access their stairway to heaven through something or somebody else. So through a priest, for example, through a framework, for example, and this is really important to change this now. So another way to really look at this is what is it in your life that is going to change this week around your personal story? And um, this week we have got planet squaring Pluto. So we've got Venus squares Pluto, the Sun squares Pluto and Mercury squares Pluto. So again, if you think of Pluto as being the shadow story, it's blue storm, it's a yellow sun, it's what's coming up around my shadow story on a personal level that may be amplified for people on a galactic level on, you know, the, the whole planet. Um, what's coming up around that for me personally in my own particular life? So Pluto is like the patriarchy, it's the father figure, you want to know more about that, Hades, check out Persephone and Demeter story, uh, especially key for women as well. So it's something that's happened to us. Um, again, it ties into the North Nodes. It happens every 18 and a half years. So the first time it will have happened will have been when you were around 18 and a half years old where something happened to you around some sort of shadow story that impacted on you in a big way. And this is key to personal evolution. Okay, so just adding on a document there to the recording and hopefully it is still recording. Let's just check, yep. Okay, so as I was saying earlier, with the groups of people that I'm working with at the moment, we use this document to go deeper into the code of the 13 day process. And in particular, focusing on crossover dates, Gregorian dates. So this is how you can use the dream spell in a practical way and so in there we've got all the previous codes coming up the previous two 52 day cycles and the one that we're currently in and in this particular section this is where you get your own personal code and the current astrology so things are happening and yes, great to note there that we are now in planetary moon, 28 day cycle. So we've seen the manifestation of our authenticity and being the beacon of light. And today we are on day nine of planetary moon. So this is a gateway day in terms of our authenticity. And so I like to include articles on there as well by other people who go deeper into this information. There's a link for the documentary that I was on about earlier on. And my focus is on life coaching, energy coaching, using emotional freedom technique. So we can also work on a deeper level 
my my sign being blue solar hand which is the gateway day of the blue storm wave spell so we began yesterday there we go with the astrology so old stories coming up yesterday responsibility and today we've got the new moon in Aries at 22 degrees so the storyline is coming in for all of us and we've got Venus at 26 degrees, Aries square, Pluto at 26 degrees, Capricorn. So that's one of the first squares. So again, it's opening up to our maturation process around the old storyline of the patriarchy, what we've been conditioned to believe in our environment, in our family, in our culture and how we come into truth. So one of the key pointers for that really is emotionally where we're getting triggered, where we feel angry, where we feel frustrated, where we feel we're being repressed in some way, where we're being controlled, we are being pushed down and treated like children in some way that's, so again, you know, what happens to us as children, how we were treated by adults. That's a really key thing. As I said, on Wednesday, we begin a new 20 day spiral of being self existing. How do we let go of our codependency issues, our mothering issues, our nurturing issues, our survival? How much have we let go of those how much we adapted really i suppose over the last year where we've had maybe had to change career had to change how we do career had to focus on what was going on in our personal sanctuary in our home in our relationships and as I said, on Saturday, we've got lots of things going on Saturday. That's one of them, Mercury squaring Pluto again at 26 degrees. So, and we've also got, as I said, we have got Mars at 26 degrees at that point in Gemini, so it's coming up around releasing that story. We've got Jupiter at 26 degrees in Aquarius. So what's expanding, what's possible around this new age of Aquarius way of being, what's fair for all, what is abundant in our life around being solution focused, for example, our bigger picture, Pluto in Capricorn and Mercury in Aries, as we've already said. So all of that is that energy is just so bringing that release so we can release the seed. We can catapult that seed out at this time of being our true star seeded self. And then on Sunday, more of that energy again, Mercury's conjunct the sun, at 29 degrees, which is what we call the anoretic degree. So woohoo, and ready to make a soul shift, ready to change our human being focus. So it's gonna be a very dynamic week. And so even though we went into Aries on the 20th, we have been waiting for this new moon energy basically to bring us this dynamic. It's in the third decan of Aries so it's very much about the bigger picture of how we do this in society as well and then the day after on the 19th of April the Sun and Mercury go into Taurus so that's on the gateway day white so the world bridger so then we're starting to come into that lovely earth energy, what we value, what we love, and how to make that manifest, how to embody that. That's the key, isn't it? This, is, this time is all about embodiment. 
showing us how are we living our truth? Are we living our learning? Are we living what we believe? And then on Thursday, the 22nd, we've got Red Crystal Moon Day. And Venus is conjunct to Uranus at 10 degrees. So which I've already mentioned how that is also key to manifestation and what's coming to light with Venus. What is Venus opening up? for this Uranus energy, what, which is connected to, in the mind signs, red earth, and also white wind. That Uranus energy bringing light to what needs to shift. And on Friday, the 23rd, which is St. George's Day, Mars goes into Cancer, so that's gonna be really bringing up all that sacred feminine energy there too. And we're actually at the center of the Zolki in the very, very center with white cosmic dog, the epicenter. So what needs to shift in our ancestral patterning so that we can be guided by the Sirius star so that we can start to allow this fertility to come in, this sacred feminine energy and this is really taking us into the next phase, the next key phase of the summer solstice in the northern part of the hemisphere. So another key day really is um, Friday. And so the sun squares Pluto on Friday. Um, we've also got Jupiter there at 26 degrees of Aquarius as well. And, and so this is the day of here. Okay, so we're here with the conscious dreamer. And so something powerful is going to come in for you this week. And it may be a surprise around what you're seeing reflected back at you. Again, if you choose, you can go to, okay, so what created that experience for me on an inner level? How did I create that belief system that is manifesting this outside? What is my inner projection story there, really? How can I focus on opening up to that more and more and becoming very aware of it so that I can really start to change my belief system. So again, this North Node story, how do I change this belief system that I have? What do I need to focus on specifically around what I want to create as a conscious dreamer? As we come into that Taurus energy and as we come into the next segment, which will be Blue Monkey, coming into the very reason for this whole process, if you like, which is to heal our inner child, to become the divine child, to become free of the old story in order to live from our heart, live the dream, live our passion, be the gift that we've come to be in this lifetime. So I hope you have an amazing, amazing 13 day process. And if you've got any questions, please do get in touch with me. I will put the links at the bottom of the video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do and click the bell because that means you'll get the video sent to you in your YouTube subscriber list saying this video is now out for you to watch. And please do let me have any questions and feedback under the video. Let me know what's happening for you with your story. And also if you'd like to take part in the next 52 day process, which is coming up on the 20th of May, 
just before the eclipses. So we've got some major, major astrology coming this summer and it's going to be big. So keep tuned and focus on your inner journey. That's the most important point for you. As you change the inside, the outside has to change and that's the magic. So learning how to do this is blue hand, shape your destiny and change the world. Lots of love. See you soon.